Most surgeries' great advantages are optimizing the cure rate for cancer and providing the highest cure rate available for those tumors, and at the same time preserving the greatest amount of normal tissue. What I mean by that is when a cancer is excised using Mohs surgery, it's typically done under local anesthetic. The surgeon then starts to cut immediately around the cancer that they can see. They don't take a margin. Some people think or understand or have heard the term margin in relationship to removal of cancers. Now, that's something that you would see with a standard surgical excision. That's not required in the scenario of Mohs surgery. In Mohs surgery, you only cut around what you can see, and you take small, we call surgical levels, or cut pieces of tissue, and slides are prepared of those t pieces of tissue. The locations they come from, from the patient, are systematically mapped so that if you identify any cancer within those slides, you're able to systematically map where that came from on the patient and go back to precisely that location. One of the easiest ways to describe the process to a patient is to say that the cancer is sitting on the surface of their skin and extending down into it. When we start to cut into it, cutting immediately around it, with maybe a millimeter or so to spare, we take out a small section that looks a lot like a cereal bowl. What you hope is you hope that the cancer is somewhere in the middle of the bowl and not on the edges. You then provide that slide to your histotechnologist after the specimen is divided in half and histological marking dyes are used. The histological technologist, who's a specialized technologist doing this specific form of, of treatment with us, will then create what we call relaxing incisions. It then allows the surface of the skin up near the edges to flex down flat on the surface of the slide while simultaneously allowing the surgeon to visualize the entire base of the specimen. It's this way we're able to see 100% of the cut edge of the specimen. And for a standard smaller piece or smaller tumor, when that's done, you get two pieces of tissue back. Each side looks like a semicircle or half the face of a clock. When you analyze that under the microscope, you're able to identify precisely where the residual cancer cells lie, whether they're up on the surface near the edges or down in the base in the center. For example, the cancer might be present at the two o'clock spot on the surface and down near the, the central base on an other piece of tissue. Those areas are then marked on the slot on the map itself. It's taken back into the, the room to do additional surgery on the patient. The area is then re-anesthetized to make sure that the freezing, if you would, is still stable and the patient's still comfortable, and additional pieces are only taken in the precise locations where you see the cancer. For that reason, you don't have to then systematically go around the entire site again and then sacrifice unnecessary tissue. This process is repeated numerous occasions, usually for one or two levels. Every time we take tissue away and analyze it, we call that a level. A lot of patients will have their cancers removed in maybe two or three levels. Sometimes for a more complicated or aggressive cancer form, it takes multiple levels and may take many, many hours to remove the cancer. But the good news is at the end of the day, the patient knows their cancer is removed with the highest treatment method and cure rate possible to them. The next advantage is we've saved the greatest amount of tissue by only focally tracking where those roots are growing. That allows us the optimum ability to reconstruct the surgical defect because we haven't sacrificed unnecessary tissue by cutting a wide margin around the cancer, not really knowing where the roots are growing. That's what's typically done in a standard surgical excision, and that's why Mohs surgery is significantly better. You get real-time histological analysis to confirm the cancer clearance, and you save the greatest amount of tissue. Patients know at the end of the day their cancer is gone and they don't have to wait around 11 to 14 days to get a pathology report back from the main hospital saying the cancer is still there or not. Once the cancer has been completely removed, the patient's brought back into the operating theater and the reconstruction of that surgical defect typically occurs on the same day. It's a very long day, but from beginning to end, you go from having this tumor to the highest cure rate possible for it to having the site reconstructed.